Last Friday, we awoke to the news of the death of Queen Elizabeth II. In death as in life, this remarkable woman hardly attracted a ne negative word from anyone, in fact, quite the contrary. Elizabeth became queen in 1952, when St Joseph's College was 17 years old. It's now 87. The Virtus School magazine of that year records that on Friday, February the 15th, at a school assembly in the hall, we stood in silence to mourn the passing of His Late Majesty King George VI. The Virtus does not record any similar acknowledgement of the Queen's coronation on June the 2nd that year, perhaps because it fell during the school holidays. While those Australians who favour the continuance of a constitutional monarchy and those who favour a republic with an Australian head of state disagree on the most appropriate form of governance, they generally agree that Queen Elizabeth was a remarkable and admirable woman. And I think her life provides us with a great example of the importance of commitment and the value of perseverance during changing times. May she rest in peace. Last week, I was privileged to attend a Club 32 gathering and on behalf of the college, accept a check from the Michael Carmody Foundation for $10,000 towards the college bursary program. Our bursary program provides families for whom our school fees are out of reach with the opportunity to access a St Joseph's education. Our program currently has approximately 20 students receiving full fee bursaries. We're confident that next year this number will be over 30 and we're well on the way towards our goal of 50 bursaries by 2025. In 2008, three of the then four Geelong Catholic secondary schools participated in the first Triumph Music Festival. Deriving its name from three schools uniting to make poverty history, and conceived and planned by student leaders with the support of St Joseph's teacher, Simon Carr. This first festival headlined by the Galvatrons saw 4,000 young people gather at St Joseph's for a one day music festival. It raised $43,000 to support education in Timor-Leste. Running on a three year cycle, the festival was scheduled for 2020, but postponed due to COVID until this year. Uncertainty about whether regulations would allow 6,000 students from the now five Geelong Catholic secondary schools together saw the event reimagined as Triumph Light. Last Friday, Triumph Light was celebrated across the five schools with music, food and other activities. And while we don't have final fundraising figures available yet, all funds raised will support the training of East Timorese teachers to assist young people of our nearest neighbour live lives free of poverty. Thank you to everyone who contributed to Triumph Light in any way. And in particular, I'd like to acknowledge the work of Mr. Jerry O'Callaghan as part of the organising committee. It's generally held that a strong sporting and strong music program are the pillars on which successful schools are built. And in recent days, there's been much to be proud of with students representing us in the Associated Catholic Colleges events in both these areas. Our cross country team finished a close second in the annual ACC Carnival, winning the under 15 and under 17 age groups. Our musicians performed in the Accent on Music concert at Hamer Hall and performed magnificently. I had the privilege of being present, enjoying and admiring the skill of our musicians. During 2022, the college has benefited from a strong group of student leaders led by Deputy Captains Arden Kaneen and Seamus Ryan and College Captain Patrick Fitzgerald. In recent weeks, students and staff have been involved in the process of identifying and selecting our senior student leadership group for 2023. One might describe those who made themselves available as providing the college with an embarrassment of riches when it comes to selecting our leadership group for 2023. And I very much look forward to making these announcements to you in coming days. God bless.